their initial reaction was just, you know, it's not going to work. For most people, the idea of starting factories in Liberia was absolutely crazy, and you might as well just take your money outside and set it on fire because it was not coming back to you under any circumstances. You're a successful kid. You live a very, very nice life. You live in Silicon Valley. Why do you want to go to Liberia? Do you know what it's going to be like there? It was always clear to me that I wanted to just go see for myself. Liberia was home to one of the most insane civil wars that anybody could ever imagine. It was really, really, really a nightmare. Child soldiers and the chopping of limbs and going into villages and burning the whole thing down. There was a real serious culture of sexual assault towards women as an act of war. And that lasted, some people say, for 14 years, some people say even longer. A quarter million people dying and even more people than that being displaced in places like Ivory Coast and Ghana and the U.S. and Europe. When I was 18 months, moved to Germany, and my dad became Liberia's ambassador. And I had watched some of the most powerful men from this country execute this war for decades, for my entire childhood. So when I heard this story that a bunch of women had started a peace movement and their participation in the war was praying in the middle of war zones, I was pretty moved by that. So it's 2010 and I decided I just want to come here and work with these women in a way. Liberia had an 80% unemployment rate, an 80% poverty rate. Only about 40% of children were in school. And I'd luckily gotten this training in finance and accounting and in marketing. So I thought, well, what if I could lend that to these women as a way of helping to lift their families out of poverty? I came here without a very serious idea of what we were going to do, but got on the ground and started going to meet with some of the women's groups. What became clear is they all had some type of sewing program. So extremely naively, I thought, oh, this is like the oldest business in the Industrial Revolution. Why don't we just start sewing factories? How hard could that be? I started going around to people and telling them, we're going to Liberia, it's post-conflict, and we're going to start sewing factories. And they're going to be amazing, and they're going to lift hundreds and hundreds and someday thousands of women out of poverty. People, of course, would think that I was a maniac. I mean, Liberia didn't have power. There was no running water in most of the city. There was no supply of thread or fabric. And so that became our obsession. It was a pretty small project, then grew quickly when we signed these gigantic agreements with American buyers for $40 million a year in annual revenue. We rebuilt this factory, and in 2014, everything was finally ready to go. The fabric is in place, the machinery is in place. We were flying as a company and so excited. If you could feel the energy of 300 workers in here every day that were having their lives transformed, that were providing for thousands of family members, and then the Ebola outbreak happens. The president declared a federal state of emergency. West Point, where our factory is, basically became ground zero. They quarantined the neighborhood, which is where 75% of our workers live. And Ebola was on the front cover of every major newspaper in the world. And people started to get really scared. We lost basically every uh, order and every customer that we had, and what was clear was that they were not going to put in any more orders. We would tell the women, no, you can't come to the factory, there's no work. And they'd still come because to them, this is part of their home. There is a certain responsibility that you feel when you employ people, especially in a place like Liberia where jobs are very scarce. So 
For me, it became very clear quickly that the factory needed to restart for the workers. My husband went blind, he had glaucoma. After that, I took up the responsibility to feed the family. So I decided to go on the street to sell. And I would sell for the whole day. It was very healthy for me until when I came to Liberty and Justice and see work. I always had hope that our customers would return. They'd invested a lot in the project also, and I thought that there was no way we're gonna come this far to only come this far. We had enough fabric to make about half a million pairs of pants, just sitting in a warehouse. I met with the leadership of the Women's Association, and I said, well, you know, I have an idea. All the kids need school uniforms to go to school. Why don't we become a uniform producer and sell them to the people in Liberia? The women humored me for a second and said, good idea, boss, but we can't afford school uniforms for our kids. How's the rest of the country going to afford them right now? And in a moment of almost desperation and ideation, I was like, well, what if we just gave the uniforms away? Everybody started cheering, actually. But one of the women said, OK, and how do we pay for that? I said, well, there is this thing in America called the one-for-one one model. We were pretty scared of raising any more capital. So we decided to start it on Kickstarter to see if there was demand for the idea. In the first five hours, we sold $50,000 worth of t-shirts. We ended up selling about $230,000 within a month and then another 170 dollars in pre-sales. We were lucky enough to launch in Bloomingdale's and through that we're able to put tens of thousands of kids in school last year, which is pretty powerful. These uniforms were given to you because we believe in you and because we see that you're going to have an amazing future if you stick to your education. Liberia doesn't have a 40% enrollment rate because parents don't want their kids to go to school. Parents desperately want their kids to go to school. They just can't afford it. They can't afford the school uniform, can't afford the school supplies, and so they ask their kids to stay home. 98% of the children of the women of this factory are in school. So we think the best way to make sure kids go to school is to make sure their moms have a job. My kids are wearing the uniform that is made in this factory. One of the best parts of this business and my job has been getting to build it in partnership with Impact. Investors like Jim Sorensen and Bill Ackman and Scott Satterwhite and Josh Mailman, they are amazing optimists. And I think that is why uh, somebody having a crazy idea, like we're going to manufacture apparel in Liberia and we're going to use that as a way to lift hundreds and someday thousands of women out of poverty. That stuck with them. They could see it, they bought into it. And as we've gone through crazy experiences, they always figured out a way of saying, okay, great, let's stop, pivot, and what's our next step? Our main goal was, how do we get moms to work so that we can start addressing all of these other social problems? Some people employ women to manufacture apparel. We manufacture apparel to employ women. 